So what's up guys, it's your boy Pat Patch and today I'm going to be talking about a very hotly discussed topic inside the self-defense community and that's whether or not you can fight more than one person at once, like fighting multiple attackers. And the reason why I want to talk about this specific question is that I actually have a story that really relates to this and it was an occasion where I actually had to fight more than one person at once. In fact, it was more like I had to fight 30 people at once. I sh you not there was a situation where it was me and five other my friends facing down 30 people six on 30 so just to give you some context on this let's rewind the clock <laughs> Back to when I was 16, I was in grade 10, I was a high school freshman here in Canada. And when I lived in high school, me and all my homies, we all lived on the exact same block. I had my boy Natu, who lived right next to my boy James, who lived one house away from my boy Kevin. And they lived on one side of this elementary school, and I lived on the other side of this elementary school, right down the block. So we basically literally all lived 30 seconds away from each other. And you know, we would always hold it down in the neighborhood. We had our own gang name, we were Castle Crew, it was so sick. We were always doing like that badass thing. We were playing basketball all the time. We would hold down the park. We were riding bikes all the time. We even had our own gang name. We were Castle Crew. Castle Crew helped down the neighborhood. Everybody knew who we were. They were scared of us. They feared us. You know, they put a little bit of respect, but mostly, you know, people knew who we were. Anyways, one day, James calls me up and he's like, yo, dude, there's like this kid he's beefing me and he wants to fight. Can you come back me up? And you know, like, I'm not scared of anything. So I was like, okay, whatever. I'll come back you up. I don't care. So on my way to James's house, I start rounding up the boy. I get Natu, I get Kevin, one of her friends is with us, James' older brother is also with us, and then we start heading down to the alleyway where all this is gonna go down. And so we end up in the alleyway, and there's six of us, there's three kids at the end of the alleyway that were all friends, and one of them was the one that James had to fight, and there was a girl there. And basically, James and the guy, I honestly don't know like what the whole thing was about, I don't know they were like fighting about the girl, I can't remember exactly why. They got mad about who's gonna suck on whose toes, I didn't know the full story, but I just knew that they were beefing each other and it had something to do with that girl. So we're in the alleyway. So there's these three kids, us, and then the one girl. Then James and the guy start calling each other out. And the girl's in the middle too. And she's kind of being like an instigator. She's saying this and this and this and whatever. And the girl and the guys and James, they're all just like going at each other. But they're not fighting, right? It's one of those situations where people are yelling at each other, but they don't want to fight each other. Like you can tell they don't want to fight. This goes on for like 20 or 30 minutes. It's half an hour, basically nothing happening. So then I was like, yo, guys, if you're you're actually gonna fight then start fighting like don't talk about it just go ahead and do it and then James walked over he pushed the kid he went up to push the kid again and the kid pushed him back really hard and James he had flew <laughs> the kid was just like don't touch me and you could tell that James was a little shook because then they went right back to not fighting each other they went right back to talking there's even like one moment where those two didn't want to fight so the kid was like yo why doesn't one of my friends fight you one of your friends which didn't make sense at all anyways after another 10 20 minutes of just talking and antagonizing each other the kid's like yo how about this i'm gonna call my cousin because there's six of you and only three of us so it's unfair i don't trust your homies and then james like all right yo go ahead call your cousin and then we'll fight so everybody's just waiting there and in my head what i think is gonna happen is that this kid's older cousin is gonna show up and he's gonna be the adult in the situation be like yo you know why like fighting that's not the answer you guys are young i was like 16 and everybody else was like 15 at the time so it was like 16 and 15 year olds one of my friends Natu, at the time was 13 so we got 13 15 and 16 year olds they're all in the highway just ready to fire or whatever 10 20 minutes goes by and then in the corner of my eyes i look and i see through this fence that i see two vans pull up i was like oh shit this is like this kid probably either called his cousins or his parents right and they're gonna come in like everybody's gonna get yelled at and lectured and stuff like that bro so this next part this was so freaking insane. So the kid, he's at the end of the alleyway. Let me get this in focus. So right here is me and all my friends right here. It's all six of us. Right here's the girl, she's like the in the middle. Kind of makes sense because we're kind of like all fighting over her. And then there's the three guys right here. So this is our field. This was a field to another school. And right here is a baseball diamond. And then right here is a catwalk. So while we're waiting for this guy's cousins, he's sitting right over here. And then he ends up looking down this catwalk. Bro, and when he looks down this catwalk, it was like a movie. You see one guy step out of the catwalk, then two guys, and then all of a sudden there's three guys walking out, and then another like 30 people walk through the, run, they run, they're running through that opening. They all run up, and there's literally 30 people, 30 freaking people, and they go around the guy who called them. Like, they're all just yelling at each other, yelling at each other, and he points toward me and all my friends. He points toward all of us. And those 30 people, they just look, they see 
his friends, they run over to his friends and they start grabbing, pushing them around. And then his friends are like, no, 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 it's not us, it's not us. It's those kids over there. And the whole crowd, like seagulls, bro, like their necks was like, Shoop, all looked at us and they all start rushing us. And the that I saw, bro, there was guys in bandanas. There was guys who were rolling around chains, literally like bikers and greasers. There was guys who had batons out. There was a guy, literally there was a guy holding back the most jacked pit bull you've ever seen. He was literally struggling to hold him back. He's getting pulled forward by the dog. And there's even two guys, they're holding up a huge flag, like a banner. They're, they're holding up a flag. Bro, it literally looked like, you know when people go on those protests, but the purge style, it was so messed up. So in my head, I was like, okay, we'll start walking away, acting like, like, we're not a part of this. Listen, we're not, we're not a part of this. And as soon as we get around the corner in the alleyway, we're gonna start booking it around the corner and get out of here. But these guys didn't even give us time to get to the end of the alleyway. They just roll up on us. The first guy, he's he was wearing like a light blue shirt. He had a bandana, a black bandana across his face. And I was looking at James because he was the one that was the furthest ahead of us. This guy just got surrounded, surrounded in an ocean of people. One second you see him, next thing you don't. I was like, yeah, James is dead. Whatever. Like, I can't, I miss him. He was my friend, but he's dead now, so there's not much I can do. I gotta get the hell out of here with my, the rest of my friends. So we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. And then the guy catches up to and he's starting to push everybody. He's like, give me your phones, empty your pockets. I had a phone, but what I did was that I, my phone was like in my pocket like that. He was filling up everybody's pockets. So if you felt up your pockets, he would've felt my phone. But what I did was that I had my hand in like this, that was pushing out. So he went and felt like my hand, not my phone. So the guy's filling us all up and he's searching for our phones. And then he comes up to Kevin and my, friend Kevin, he was 16 at the time, but if you looked at him, he looked like he could be like 18. Yeah, or had like this bubble going on. He was the biggest one out of all of us. Like again, we were just like 15 year olds, 16 year olds, and these guys were a bunch of high schoolers, a bunch of 18 year olds and stuff like that. And then the one guy comes up to Kevin, he's like, yo, give me your phone. Cause Kevin, he just had it out, like just chilling. Kevin's like, no, I'm good. And he said it like a cocky way. And I kind of like felt like the tension building. I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad. So the guy pushes Kevin, he's like, all right, get moving. And Kevin's like, all right, all right, all right. He turns around and literally he takes five steps and the guy who pushed him jumps up, puts him in a like, chokehold like this. And he's like, just like that. And right away, it's pandemonium. Shit that starts going down the drain. So what Kevin did, so the thing is me and Kevin have been wrestling our whole lives, right? So we kind of had a good idea how these self-defense situations had to go down. So what Kevin did, choked, tucked his chin, grabbed the guy's arm and just fell to the ground. And the guy was stuck to Kevin. But then all of a sudden, seven people just went around them and so started duck, duck, punching and kicking him. But the thing is, Kevin did a smart thing. You probably don't want to turtle up and when you're getting jumped. But what happened was that Kevin, because he had the guy pinned to his back, the guy was taking all the damage for Kevin. They were punching and kicking and they were just hitting the dude on top of Kevin. In my head, I'm like, holy crap, my friend is getting jumped. I got to do something. So me and two of my friends, we, we run up and we start pulling people off, right? We're trying to pull people off. But you no, know, these are like strong 18 year old men. like, And we're the little kids, we're 15 year olds, 16 year olds, right? Like our bodies haven't developed yet. So I'm like pulling, I can't do it. And then my body, Body just automatically by itself this went and I swung and I nailed somebody right in the back of the head right here the guy you know million dollar baby he goes like like that he slumps to the floor but then right away he gets up he looks all dazed I didn't knock him out but he was knocked down he gets up and he's all dazed looking around he turns around he sees me he stops hitting Kevin and this next part was like a James Bond like villain movie the guy gets up starts walking toward me one guy comes in from the left one guy comes in from the right so there's three on one and literally all I could say was oh shit. these guys start coming toward me I turn around and I start I start booking it and as I'm running somebody throws a fist and it just barely clicks me. So, barely just touches me but I was like super adrenalized yo my my full instinct chia mode I jump over a fence this fence could have been 12 feet tall and it could have cleared it in one jump that's how adrenalized I was I jumped cleared it start running like you say bolt if I started running as fast as I did and I happened to run by the 2012 London Olympic track bro I would have blown Usain Bolt out of the water. So I'm like running, 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 jump another fence, jump another fence, jump another fence until I'm back at my house. I'm so paranoid that one of those guys are watching me. So I'm like, Ch -ch -ch -ch. in my head, I'm like, this is gonna be such a good idea. I'm gonna not go through 
the front door because they're gonna see that's my house and they're gonna come back and whoop my ass. I run to the side of my house, jump through the washroom window, I climb through, I calm down. I get in my house, no lights are on. I don't wanna try on any lights. And then it clicked to me up. In my head, I was like, bro, I just left everybody to die. They're all dead. They're literally all dead. Like, there's no way they could have survived. First thing I do, I'm like, okay, I need to go back there with backup, like, just in case those people are there. First thing I do is I call up my cousin Mark, pretty big guy. He's like six foot two, 200 pounds, and he's been doing like amateur MMA and stuff like that. He's gonna come with me, and like, that's all the backup I need. So I call him, I'm like, yo, Mark, I need your backup. And he's like, yo, what the hell? I can't even get there in time, because by the time I get there, it's gonna be 20 minutes. So I was like, okay, whatever, okay, whatever. I hang up the phone. I'm like, who else can I call? I call up my friend Teddy, because in my head, I always thought that he was like a gangster. So I was like, yo, he's gonna come up, blow up with his gang. He's gonna have guns and stuff like that, and we're gonna have like a shootout. I call up my boy Teddy, I'm like, Teddy, Kevin just got jumped and we need to go back there and we need to beat the shit out of these people. And he's like, same thing. Yo, man, I can't because I'm going to be there in like 20 minutes. I was like, F I just turned on the thing and literally I was like, holy shit, my friends are dead. And as I'm thinking that, all of a sudden I get a call. I look and it's Kevin's number. I'm like, what? And a little part of me is like, yo, one of these guys picked up Kevin's phone and called through his phone and now they're looking for me. I'm like looking, I'm like, hello? All I hear is Kevin's voice on the other side. And he's like, yo, dude, super calm. Come back. Nobody's here anymore. So I head back to James's house where all of them like, met up. And I look at them. I look at all their faces as they start crying. And I go up to Kevin. Yo, dude, I'm so sorry that I left you behind. I was so scared. I thought you were dead and now you're not dead. And then I was also crying because I was like, wow, I can't believe I left this guy. What turned out to happen was, remember back when I was showing you this this picture of how the catwalk looked? Right here, remember I said how there was a, there was a baseball diamond? Well, what actually happened was that there was these parents, they were all playing, there was adults playing softball on that baseball diamond, and they saw the whole thing go down. As soon as they saw 30 people run out, they called the cops, and the cops rolled up ASAP. The reason why there's so many people and so many cops out on the streets is because early May in Calgary, there's this huge parade that always happens, and there's always people running around the streets and stuff like that. They actually even like close off streets. So that's why everything was so populated. And so what happened was that as soon as the cops rolled up, there's like 12, there's like four cop cars that rolled up, going through the fields and stuff like that, and cops going like, like, shh, shh, pulling out the gun, like they're about to like hand down an episode of Law and Order. Everybody booked it. Everybody started running away. The cops came up and they're like, "Oh, what happened here?" And my friends were being the smart ones. They're like, "Oh, we just like there was so many people here. We don't even know what happened." And then those three kids that were originally there, that my, well, my boy James was supposed to fight one of them. He was so stupid. He was about to snitch on himself. He was about to be like, "Yo, I called my cousins on everybody here." He was about to snitch himself, but my friends managed to stop him from saying anything. And then the cops were like, "All right." Shh, shh. We're gonna go look for the purpose and they all dispersed. That was my experience with fighting more than one person at once. The lesson here is that if you're ever in that type of situation, the best thing you can do is just run. Fighting one person one on one is one of the hardest things possible. Two, three, four, five, thirty people. That's already impossible. Unless you're literally Iron Man slash Batman. No, you just can't do it. Quick side note, what happened was that James later, he told me that one of the guys, what he did was when they all surrounded James in that little bubble of people, the guy what, pulled up the shirt and apparently had a gun tucked into his waistline saying like, yo, don't like mess with us. Like you don't want any of this and all that stuff. So you, you never know like what these type of people are carrying on them. Crazy shit. I kept on telling people that story in high school. Nobody believed me that like, you would be dead. But I'm not dead because, you know, I was running faster than Usain Bolt that day. Anyways, everybody, I hope you enjoyed that video. Like the video if you like these type of story videos. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We're at 62 subscribers. Let's try to get 100 subscribers. We're almost there. Comment down below if you've ever been in a situation like this where you had, you're, you're like getting jumped or like you had to fight more than one person. Follow me on my social media. Instagram is patpatchfit. Twitter is patrick underscore pida. Snapchat is pattypatch. And you can even email me at patpatchfight at gmail.com if you have any questions about the fight game or what to do in situations like this and share this video if you enjoyed the video all right i'll see you next week peace